Hey cupcakes! A desert oasis awaits us, where water is scarce, temperatures are brutal, and monsters rule the sands and the sky. I am Mushroom, and today we are back on Earth Survival Ascended, preparing for the much-anticipated release of Scorched Earth. We will be going through the top 5 best creatures to get you through the brutal early game. These are the creatures you should start with in order to help you get wyverns, rock golems, and the other extremely strong late game teams. Each of these creatures will help you get through the arduous early game. Let's get into it with our first creature, the Thyla. The reason why Thylas are being put on a list of early game teams is because they are so much easier to team on Scorched Earth than almost any other map. One of the challenges in teaming them is because they always spawn on redwood trees on normal maps. But because there are no redwood trees on Scorched, the marsupial lion spawns on the ground all along the edges of the desert. The Thyla's favorite food is cooked mutton, and ovis are a very common spawn by green ob. So you can spawn by green, easily kill an ovis, and trap a Thyla without much trouble. Taming a throwaway team like a basic raptor will make carting the Thyla into a trap so much easier. Once you have a Thyla, you can take out almost any threat on the map without any issues at all, but they are especially great for taking out one of the most deadly creatures that you will have to face on your playthrough on Scorched, Deathworms. The Thyla's bleed attack is super efficient for killing almost anything. They will make desert runs a breeze. They are also the best possible team for most caves, which makes them so important for your playthrough. Our next creature should be your very first team on every playthrough, the Morelatops. Sometimes considered the cattle of Scorched Earth, this creature is meant to get you through the struggles of early game. They can drink and store water for you and even allow you to fill your canteen in their inventory. Just remember to bring them to a water source when they are on dry. Morelatops may not be great in a fight, but they have a knockback attack that'll knock back almost any creature fighting you. And they are a reliable travel mount that can be tamed with only a slingshot and mage berries. But remember, if you find them in a group, they're going to be aggressive. If you find one solo, it's going to try to run away. Moving on to our third on this list is a creature that so often gets overlooked, the Lymantria. On a map as hostile as Scorched, taking to the air is vital. Pteranodon do not spawn there, so the easiest way is to tame a mob. They can be bullied and knocked out easily, and while they prefer regular kibble, they will eat major berries. Not only will the Lymantria be a great team for early game, they will also be invaluable for taming Argentavis later on in your playthrough, as they can be used to lure the RG into a trap. Not only can they make taming an RG easy, but Lymantria can also help with land creatures, as its slowing cloud ability will slow the creature, so your tribe members can tame it without needing to use a trap. The best way to tame one of these little moths is to wait for it to land and trap it with a tent for an easy KO. The fourth creature on our list is another that I consider necessary on your playthrough specifically on Scorched Earth, the bug-eating Megatherium. While I would usually consider them to be a late game mount, the Megatheriums can easily be tamed with mutton, and as Ovis are so easy to find near green orb, they can be tamed pretty early on Scorched. Megatheriums are so great on Scorched as they get a buff from killing bugs, which is basically all of the creatures that you'll find in the desert. This makes them deadly against spiders, mantis, and most importantly, deadly against deathworms. Unfortunately, beavers do not spawn on Scorched Earth for cementing paste, and snails are typically difficult to find as you often have to venture into a cave to find them. Because of this, cementing paste is very difficult to get. The easiest way to get it is actually to craft it, but unfortunately, that takes a ton of chitin. The giant sloth is the absolute best for collecting chitin, and one trip to the desert can black box your inventory with it. This will be invaluable for your playthrough, but also, their ability to win a fight against almost everything that spawns on Scorched will make the sloth a must -in. Before we move on to our last creature, we have to address the most important struggle to overcome on Scorched Earth, how to get your first wyvern egg. Also, if you're enjoying this content, please consider liking and subscribing as we're so close to hitting a thousand. 
back to stealing your first wyvern egg. Unfortunately, no flyer you can tame on Scorched will be able to outrun a wild wyvern, but there are alternatives. Elimantria is probably not the best choice, and while an Ergy can be effective, they usually die as they are quite slow. So, I wanted to discuss the best alternative, and an honorable mention on our list, the Tapajara. It is the best alternative if you have a trap built that's close by, as it's the fastest flyer available, so you have time to grab the egg and make it to the trap alive before the wild wyverns catch you. Also, the maneuverability the Tappy provides makes it so much easier to evade the wyvern's elemental attacks. I highly recommend you considering taming a Tappy. They'll make your playthrough so much easier. For our fifth and final addition to our list, I wanted to pick a creature that truly makes it possible to survive and build your first base, as well as find a semblance of safety early game on Scorched. This would have to be a creature that can fight the dangers around every corner, make it easier to build your base, and is possible to tame before you hit level 25. All of this considered, the Thorny Dragon has to be on this list. The Thorny Dragon can take on most of the early game dangers that you'll face as soon as you spawn, and it's so easy to tame, to stand on a rock and aim at its head with her three times the turpidity. Not only is its saddle unlocked at level 25, it's also a mobile smithy. So you're able to build your base using a smithy before you even have to place one. The absolute best part of teaming a thorny dragon is its resource weight deduction. Stone, wood, thatch, and even fiber all have 50% reduced weight in its inventory. The thorny is a master at gathering wood as well which is so important as it's very efficient and trees are much less copious on Scorched than they are on the island. It saves you so much time to use a Thorny versus any other creature to gather wood. All of these abilities make Thorny Dragons the perfect companion to help you build up your base and get you from early game all the way to late game. After five months with only the island to enjoy on Ark Survival Ascended, I'm so excited for Scorched Earth and the challenges that it's going to bring. Thank you guys so much for being here and subscribing. We are getting so close to a thousand members, I can't believe it. I can't ever begin to explain how much it means to me. Thank you guys so much for being here. Until next time, stay fresh cupcakes.